So did you know there is now one of the colleges of medicine, uh, a true college, one of the standards of medicine, I think it's um, part of the American College of Preventive Medicine, one of the colleges of medicine now is totally focused on lifestyle medicine. Uh, this is their website. You can look it up. It's not, uh, it's not a, a lightweight group. It's uh, folks that are making medicine out of lifestyle. And as many of us know, many of the viewers on this channel know that uh, lifestyle is medicine. So that's a good thing. It's, it's uh, a little bit frustrating that it's taken this long for us to get that focused on lifestyle. I'm going to go through a, a uh, introduce a few of the actors in this uh, in this movement. But first, uh, an introduction. Ford Brewer, F O R D Brewer, B R E W E R. Uh, we run Prev Med, um, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability uh, prevention. So <clears throat> we're all about doing that. And as you'll see, I've, I've trained and uh, worked with several of the folks that are moving this ahead on a standards committee uh, based level. So speaking of which, I'll start off with Mike Parkinson. Mike and I uh, trained together at Hopkins in preventive medicine. I uh, like to call Mike the Elvis of uh, prevention. He's a very engaging speaker, very, uh, uh, very focused in terms of lifestyle medicine for over the past 30 years. Uh, also very uh, focused on helping bring lifestyle medicine to uh, academic credibility. Now, this is Dexter Sherney. Dexter's at Vanderbilt. I think he made one of his biggest uh, contributions to lifestyle medicine when he was the medical director for Cummins, a tractor company. Now, how did that happen? So, uh, basically, the the tenets, the academic rigor around lifestyle medicine was being developed and the College of Lifestyle Medicine was being developed at a time when Dexter was there at Cummins. He did a contract with a company that I was working with at the time, um, uh, Premise. It's a premise to have about, oh gosh, 700 clinics on site uh, at workers, uh, workplaces, uh, universities, and Cummins was one of our uh, customers there. So Dexter's focus was get lifestyle medicine in here, um, get our docs trained and certified in lifestyle medicine, reconfigure from drugs to lifestyle. And he did a great job of getting that, that focus set up. Um, <clears throat> the current um, president, uh, of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine is a Dr. James Rippey. Dr. Rippey is a Harvard-trained um, cardiologist. He runs a uh, prevention institute in uh, Florida. I'm trying to remember the name. Um, anyhow, it's in Florida. I apologize. It's near Disney World. So he runs the Disney World of Medicine in terms of uh, getting folks focused on lifestyle as medicine. Now, <clears throat> here's an interesting point. Mike actually shared with me the, uh, the draft of the first chapter of the upcoming uh, textbook for lifestyle medicine. I can't um, go into details uh, for you yet. Um, I think that would... That might uh, cause some problems with uh, the publishers. However, I will say that there are some very interesting uh, topics covered in there. One of those topics I found especially interesting, given um, my personal and professional background. They're focusing in lifestyle medicine now on epigenetics. Now, if you're saying... What, what, what was epigenetics? I remember hearing the term. So let's go back and go through some of the basics of, first of all, what is epigenetics? You got three billion base pairs in the DNA molecule for every cell, correct? And each cell is responsible of unwinding. So that's a long strand of molecules, three billion. So those molecules, however, hold the code 
for hormones, for proteins, enzymes, the things that run our metabolic processes. So in order to develop that, to read that code and transcribe it, translate it, uh, or transcribe it into RNA and then translate it into a protein, we have to know how to unwind that DNA strand, open it up, get the code off of that specific gene component, and then close it back. Well, there's a lot of, com of ways uh, our body does that. That key to unwinding, opening, and uh, trans, uh, trans, uh, transcribing, translating, that is called epigenetics. It's sort of like if you've got a large, um, you got a fishing line, and the, not the rod, but the reel is how you store it. So the reel, the thing that you use to um, store that uh, DNA strand, and how you do it. Now remember, I've done a, another video on the methylome. The methylome is actually one of the key components of epigenetics. We methylate certain molecules, parts of the DNA base pairs. We also methylate other areas of the, um, of the DNA molecule. And that methylome, where we have uh, methylated uh, that molecule, has everything to do with epigenetics. Again, how we can unwind and actually use those genes. I rem you remember I've shared with you multiple times that um, folks with uh, 9P21 have been found to have an increased risk for insulin resistance. I have that. I also have some uh, other uh, epigenetic risks for uh, insulin resistance. <clears throat> We talked once, or a couple of times actually, about high birth weight babies. Uh, it's been found in lab rats that if you uh, gorge one generation, make them obese, the next generation of, of lab animals has increased risk for diabetes. Well, we've also found something very similar in humans. If you're born to a mother that has um, uh, maternal uh, hyperglycemia, uh, gestational diabetes, you're much more likely to be an overweight baby. An overweight baby is eight pounds or more, and overweight babies are much more likely, no matter how thin they may be through the rest of their life, they're much more likely to have diabetes as they get older, type 2 diabetes. Well, guess what? I may have had a, a BMI of 21, the low 20s, for the past 60 years. However, I was a 10 and a half pound baby. So the evidence is continuing to pile up that uh, the sins of the father uh, visit the, gener the next generation. Um, there are things that we do that have impact on even the genetics, the translation of our genetic material, uh, which has a significant impact on lifestyle and risk factor. And again, you're starting to see it in the textbooks of lifestyle medicine. So uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, interesting things going on in prevention these days. Thank you.